Hello, and welcome to another Russian Generations Health Education Lecture. Our Russian Generation staff is delighted to be your source of information, resources, and health promotion programs that help maximize your well being and good health as you wish. Today is Wednesday, September 6, 2023, and I am Grisel Rodriguez Morales, Rush Generations Program Director. I'll be your moderator for today's lecture title, Medicare 101. It's one of the Rush Generation signature lectures that we offer every year. Um, we know that the same way our health care needs could change, Medicare plans can also change every year. So we're delighted to have two of our colleagues join us and speak about Medicare today and about things you may want to keep in mind as you prepare for the Medicare open enrollment period that will start in about six weeks, which is when Medicare beneficiaries have the chance to review and make changes to their Medicare coverage. But before I introduce you uh, to our colleagues, I'd like to first thank Hannah Weizmann, our wonderful produ producer for these lectures. As she normally does, Hannah will be helping us manage the chat and other key aspects so that we all can have a great discussion. As you know, we are live streaming this lecture via our YouTube channel, where we have dozens of other health education lectures that you can always refer back to or send to friends, family, colleagues, um, anyone that could benefit from the valuable information that our speakers offer every other week. We use the video platform Zoom, which also allow us to host a good number of people who join us via phone. Uh, for those of you on YouTube, we ask that you please use the chat function to ask questions. And I've heard that there's some groups joining uh, and watching together via our YouTube channel in some senior centers and senior buildings. So thank you for that. So make sure that somebody is adding your questions to the chat and questions or any other thing that you will that may add to the discussion throughout the lecture. We will make sure that your comments and questions make it to today's presenters. And for those of you listening to the discussion via phone, as always, you will have an opportunity at the end to unmute your audio so that you can ask questions as well. So we are just delighted to have you here and to have you join us. So without further ado, I am going to introduce my colleagues, my wonderful colleagues from the Department of Social Work and Community Health. Uh, first, we have Sonia Serrano. Well, Stephanie, Stephanie Bailey is a licensed clinical social worker with over 30 years of experience working with older adults. She has worked for many healthcare organizations and nonprofit agencies, and she has worked as an outpatient social worker at Rush since 2013. She is the program coordinator for caring for caregivers at Rush. And I know that you're familiar with this program we, because after each lecture, we tell you about it. So delighted to have Stephanie and Sonia here. Stephanie is also a certified senior health insurance program counselor or a chief counselor offering free unbiased information related to Medicare options. Then we have Sonia Serranos, uh, Serrano, excuse me. It, she's a licensed social worker working with the Caring for Caregivers program at Rush as well. She graduated, Sonia graduated with her Master of Social Work from Dominican University. And she has since worked with the older adult population in the healthcare and community fields. And she's excited to be a part of the Senior Health Insurance Program team and overall supportive and engaging community to help educate and inform our clients. Thank you to both of you, Sonia and Stephanie, for joining us today. I can't wait for this discussion and uh, feel free to just pull up your slides and we'll take it from here. You'll take it from here. 
Okay, great. Thank you so much, Grisal. I'm going to bring up the presentation. And are you, I hope that everyone is seeing that. So let me know, um, just please, uh, for my, for the host, please jump good. in. All good? good? Okay, yes. wonderful. Um, so hi, as Grisal, um, introduced us. Thank you so much for that. Um, we're both SHIP counselors. Sonia and I are both SHIP counselors in the state of Illinois. We're happy to be with you today. Um, and we'll just remind you again, um, write those questions down. We'll do our best. We'll get to those at the end. Um, and of course, it's most helpful if they're questions that can kind of benefit everyone. If they're super specific, nitty gritty, we'll, we'll again, we'll do our best to get to those. Um, but we're also going to let you know how you can get your own appointment um, for those really specific individual questions during Medicare open enrollment. So today we hope to give you a broad overview of your options with Medicare, understand the different ways to access those Medicare benefits, really importantly, how to make all of this more affordable, and then some important changes that have already gone into place this year and some that we're seeing a potential for um, next year in 2024. So what is Medicare and what are some of your options with Medicare? I'm going to really briefly in the interest of time cover eligibility because my guess is that many of you have Medicare already. Um, and we found that when we did this presentation in the past, we were hearing from individuals that most folks already have it, but I will quickly go over the eligibility. Um, so to be on Medicare um, for um, in most situations, again, we won't cover every single potential situation. Um, in most cases, folks need to be a US citizen or a legal resident who's been in the US five years. For most folks, they are 65 years or older or under 65 and they've been receiving social security disability for at least 24 months. An exception is made for individuals with ALS or in-stage renal disease and um, they can uh, typically get in more quickly and Medicare has information about that at medicare.gov. A little bit more about eligibility for folks over uh, age 65 and over, um, they also need to be eligible for benefits under Social Security, under railroad retirement, um, or any of the other agencies. Um, there's a few other that are listed on the screen. For those who can't see it, um, just know that there are some you know, specific uh, groups that receive this. Um, and in general, you need to have 40 plus credits or quarters of social security covered employment, meaning that you worked for, it works out to typically about 10 years full time for an agency or company or group or office that was paying into social security. In these cases, when you have the 40 or more quarters or credits, you're eligible for Social Security and premium-free Medicare Part A. You still pay a monthly premium for Part B, which we'll get into a little bit later. And if married, you may receive benefits under a spouse's work record, even if you don't have those 40 credits or 40 quarters. Others may purchase Medicare. So if you're age 65, but don't have the 40 quarters or 10 full-time years of employment, you're able to purchase coverage but it can be quite expensive. Um, so part A um, can, can run quite a lot per month and there's ways that um, SHIP counselors can help you figure out ways to make that a little uh, more affordable. And I'm going to at this point just give a very quick overview of your ways to access Medicare coverage and then I'll pass it to Sonia. We kind of go back and forth in this presentation. Um, and so these are the four parts of Medicare, just a very broad overview. And so I'll read it. Um, I know some of y'all can't see it. So for part A, um, that's hospital insurance. That's your part A coverage. Part B is medical, or basically it means outpatient insurance. Part C is not really a part of Medicare, but it's a different way of getting those benefits. We're gonna talk about that. That's Medicare Advantage plans. 
And then part D is prescription drug plans. And now I'm going to kick it over to Sonia to go in a little bit more detail on these and I will mute myself and I'll keep advancing the slides, Sonia. Thank you, Stephanie. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and for being here. We hope you gain uh, great information on this very important topic. Okay, so parts of Medicare. So Medicare coverage is split into different parts. Uh, we have part A, B, C, and D. The important thing to know is that each part covers specific services, but not all parts necessarily go together. Um, it is helpful to know about the basic parts of Medicare. So the original Medicare is some, uh, as people refer to it, is um, when referring to the part A and B. And you can see below examples of the services each part covers. So part A is hospital insurance. So the part A covers, um, the, part, the part A is usually free, as Stephanie mentioned, if you have worked 40 quarters and your employer paid in. Rarely, some people will have to pay a monthly premium for Part A, and it, it is expensive, as we have seen. So Part A covers inpatient care in hospitals, inpatient care in skilled nursing facilities, hospice care, home health, home health such as nursing, physical, occupational therapy, ordered by a doctor and only when the patient has a skilled need a need for direct nursing care in their home. Uh, this is different from uh, non-medical, such as getting help like getting ready for the day, preparing meals, companionship at home, which is also known as homemaker services or in-home services. And unfortunately, it, that service is not covered by Medicare. Part B covers medical outpatient appointments. So doctor services, tests, vaccines, labs, ambulance and emergency situation. Part D, think of Part D as drugs or uh, prescription drugs. Uh, so Part D covers prescription drug medication. Then we have the Medicare supplement, which can also be known as Medigap. And the cost ranges based on age and type of supplement plan, health insurance sold by private companies to supplement Medicare. And it is used with original Medicare um, and only, only, only pays if Medicare does. So you must have a Part A and Part B to have a Medicare supplement, also known as Medigap. Medicare Advantage or Medicare Replacement, which is the Part C, and um, we'll go into this until a little in detail a little bit in a little bit. Uh, but please note that this is not really a part of Medicare, but instead it is a different way of obtaining your Medicare benefits offered by private companies. It can be free, meaning no additional premium, but note that you are still paying for Part B monthly, and it can be over $100 in additional cost. And um, it co Part C combines benefits offered by Original Medicare, and some plans also offer prescription coverage. So these plans combine your Part A, your Part B, and D, and they are offered. Uh, they are all offered again by one private company. Okay, next slide, Steph. Okay, and um, for those on the phone, uh, this is a visual representation. So it's two. It's two. It's two sides of um, puzzle pieces. So the first one uh, shows the. Um, so you can either go with the left side, which is the left side, um, with traditional um, or original Medicare, which is the Part A and Part B, and then you can have your optional supplement, and you can also have your Part D. And then on the right side, we have, um, which are your Parts A and B, and usually the are, com are combined and offered by well, the one company. So you see the one puzzle piece that's Part A and B, and then uh, attached is a second puzzle piece, which is the Part D for uh, just a drug coverage, prescription drug coverage. And we are going into detail on the left side of this first. So we'll refer to this slide back uh, later. 
And here is another, um, for those on the phone, another detailed representation of the same information. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more about enrollment periods. So first we'll focus on getting started with Medicare, and then we'll go into details on the left side of this chart. Um, uh, we'll first cover regional Medi Medicare A and B, adding in Part D, D, and then optional supplemental coverage. Okay, so Medicare Part A and B enrollment periods. Uh, the different parts of Medicare have different enrollment periods. So when talking about open enrollment periods, this is referring to the Part C and D open enrollment, which occurs every fall, which we'll talk about on the next slide. Um, however, the other parts of Medicare have different enrollment periods, and it is helpful to know when they are. So um, for the initial enrollment period, uh, it's a seven-month window that encompasses the month of your 65th birthday, three months before. So it's easy to think about the 313 rule. So you can enroll three months before the, um, the month you turn 65, uh, and then you can enroll the month you turn 65 and then three months after you turn 65. Uh, penalty. So it is important to enroll in Medicare when you, when you are first eligible, because in many cases, there is a late enrollment penalty for enrolling late in parts B and D. Most people take part A when they are first eligible because it is free if you work your 40 quarters or credit. Uh, but if you do have to pay for part A, be aware that it can also be, uh, there can also be a late enrollment penalty for Part A. Uh, special enrollment period. Please be aware that some people can get this and will allow, um, allow them to enroll late without a late enrollment penalty. And it is given to individuals for various reasons, allowing them to, uh, to enroll in Medicare without paying a late enrollment penalty. And some examples can be they had coverage and delayed enrollment in Part B until retired and they can delay enrollment without penalty. And the most common special enrollment period for someone is someone who's worked past their 65th birthday and is now retiring and losing their group coverage or employer coverage, and they are giving a special enrollment in Medicare. Okay, um, the, so the special enrollment can be used to delay enrolling in Part B. So again, most people take Part A when they are first eligible because it's free for most people. If you delay enrolling in Part B because you are still working, you need to ask your employer for a letter of credible coverage. So a letter of credible coverage. This means that your employer offers coverage that is at least as good as Medicare meaning that it has to be considered by Medicare to pay for just as much as original Medicare itself. This letter can help you avoid the late enrollment penalty. So it's a good idea to request it while you are still working. Also be aware that you have a certain window of time in which to enroll in Part B after you do stop working. Don't go past this, or again, you may risk uh, an enrollment penalty. The next slide. Um, and these are who needs to enroll in Medicare and who is automatically en enrolled. So the need to apply for Medicare, you will need to apply for Medicare if you are not eligible for social security benefits or you decide to delay taking social security benefits. And you can apply to Medicare through social security, online, in person, or over the phone. And we're gonna repeat this number several times. So it's 800-772-1213. Uh, and you are automatically enrolled um, to Medicare in Part A and Part B if you, already, uh, or you're, if you are already receiving Social Security benefits when you become eligible for Medicare. And now uh, go ahead and step, take it up. OK, thank you. Thanks, Sonia. Um, so again, this is, I'm going to review first the portion that is, uh, for those that can see the slide, it's the left side. So it's part A and B plus an optional supplement and an optional part D. So one second. Okay. Um, so if you can see that, this is the sort of part of the, this is the 
option that we're talking about. This is the original Medicare, sometimes we'll call it original or traditional Medicare. So we are talking about um, what is your, what typically people will call their red, white, and blue card. For most of you, I imagine you already have that. Uh, Medicare is a pay per service sim, uh, system. Uh, Medicare summary notices or MSN are sent every three months. It just lists uh, the supplies and services that you receive that are billable to Medicare. It's not a bill and it should say that very clearly on this mailing. Um, one of the benefits of utilizing traditional or original Part A and B Medicare is that there's really not a network. Um, traditional Medicare is accepted by almost any doctor almost anywhere in the US. There are limits on the fees that can be charged and it does cover most of your medical needs. But there are additional costs, of course, so we'll talk about those in a minute. On the screen is just a picture of the traditional red, white, and blue card, which I imagine most of you are quite familiar with. Um, a few years ago, they removed the social security number and gave you a different number. You know, for there's good and bad. The good thing is that you should not be carrying your social security number around. Um, to have it easily accessible for someone to steal. I find, you know, sometimes this is a little more difficult to remember. It's a bunch of letters and numbers and people don't tend to remember it. So just know if most people have that social security number memorized, if that's all you've got, that's fine. We can use that to call Medicare, um, but the Medicare number is no longer your social. So to review, Part A coverage in general includes hospital care, skilled nursing care, hospice, and home health. These are things that are ordered by a doctor. Um, ambulance transportation always comes up. Um, and ambulance transportation is when other transportation endangers health only to the nearest supplier, just the nearest hospital, the nearest uh, supplier of needed services, um, and this also um, includes, uh, again, home health services ordered by a doctor. Typically that includes, so RN, uh, nursing visits, sometimes physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language, um, and social work and home health aid, all of those if a doctor orders them. Part A costs, um, typically most folks do not pay a monthly premium, again, for Medicare Part A, but if you do have to pay, it can be quite expensive. And SHIP, your local SHIP can help you figure out ways to make all of this more affordable. Um, so again, you're in most cases, you're not paying a monthly premium, uh, but you do end up with some costs for hospital stays. And I'm not gonna go too much into detail in this, um, but just know that um, hospital days um, are initiated each benefit period um, related to how long you are in the hospital. Part B benefits are traditionally your outpatient services. So they would be doctor services, inpatient and outpatient, medical and surgical, uh, they're when you're, when you're going to physical, occupational and speech therapy, uh, when you are having outpatient lab tests and diagnostic tests done. Um, ambulance, I'm sorry about that. I know I mentioned ambulance earlier. Um, that was from uh, when you are in a skilled nursing facility. So I should say typically that falls under part B. Um, durable medical equipment falls under part B. And uh, some of these other services will fall under Part B. It just is very specific to what needs you're having at that time. Durable medical equipment, we always get a lot of questions about this because folks may want to get, um, you know, I get a lot of calls about someone has seen their neighbor had one of those nice walkers that has hand brakes and a seat. Um, or they need a, a toilet riser with handles and a raised seat. Um, and you can get those things over the counter. You can go to Walgreens and get them, and sometimes they'll have sales and coupons, and I always recommend people look out for that. If you do want it to be covered by Medicare, and you, you can get them that way as long as your doctor writes a prescription. So your doctor, your nurse practitioner needs to write a prescription for it. 
Um, of course, it has to be medically necessary, and that's why they're going to write a prescription for it. And it must be a supplier that is enrolled in Medicare. You can find those by talking to us at SHIP or by calling 1-800-MEDICARE, um, and they can give you a list of providers of durable medical equipment. I'm checking my time real quick. Okay, um, so quickly, I'm not going to read all of these. Don't worry, I won't bore you. If you can see the screen, it's a ton of things. But Part B covers a great number of preventive services, and they have expanded this in recent years. So this used to all fit on the one slide. And now, as you can see, it goes on to a second slide. Um, so there are a lot of preventive services that are being covered now. Um, I think one of the main ones that um, you will be using and that I certainly encourage you to use is an annual Medicare wellness visit. So you are entitled to that under typical, under traditional Medicare. And you should make sure that you're getting an annual checkup. <laughs> That's basically your annual wellness visit um, and your chance to see your doctor at a minimum of once a year. Beth, would you mind going back a little bit? Because actually one of the questions that we received was in terms of what was what type of preventive medicine or when at an earlier slide you put that preventive services are uh, covered? Yes. So I see diabetes screenings, depression screening, some of those more popular probably. Exactly, thank you for pointing that out. So yes, depression screenings and diabetes screenings, all of these things should be covered. Um, mammograms uh, screening, obesity screenings, nutrition, all of these really important things are covered by Medicare Part B. And you can call, I always encourage people because I know this, it, it's too much for everyone to write down and I don't want you to have to do that. So there's a couple of ways that you can obtain this list. Um, you can call Medicare. Again, it's really easy to remember. It's 1-800-MEDICARE. Um, and I'll also give you the, the actual digits um, at the end. Um, because I always have to write them down as well, <laughs> if at 1-800-MEDICARE. Um, and additionally, um, you can call them or look online for a guide that's called Your Guide to Preventive Medicine Services. Your Guide to, Pre sorry, Your Guide to Preventive Medicare Services, or just look it up online. I'll say here, and I'll say it many times, it's really important to make sure you're only looking at the Medicare site. So that's medicare.gov. And right on there, there is a question that says, is my service or screening or item covered? And then you can type in what that thing is that you're wondering, like walker, um, ambulance, diabetes screening, that type of thing, and it will give you the details. But I really like this guide to preventive Medicare services because there are so many things that folks don't know are covered. There's also a, a large booklet that all of you should have received in the mail that's called Medicare and You. It comes out every year. And if they, you know, if folks say, well, it's available online, that's great. But I like to have it on paper, and I imagine a lot of you do too. So you can request that if you don't have it, again, by calling 1-800-MEDICARE and asking for Medicare and You 2023. It has all of this in there, so you don't have to worry about writing it all down. It's thank also, you. go ahead. No, no, thank you. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Um, It's also available in lots of different languages, including Spanish, Korean, Vietnamese, and also in Braille. Um, so again, you can get the Medicare and You handbook, and I highly recommend it because almost all of the questions that I answer, that, that we answer as SHIP counselors can be found in that booklet. And I'm just, for those that can see me, I have it right here. <laughs> I always refer to it, and it's just a great resource to have on hand. So I recommend Medicare and You. Okay, now getting, I want to make sure I'm doing okay on time. So really quickly, part B costs. 
most folks do pay a Part B monthly premium. Right now, it's $164.90, so 106, basically $165 per month for most folks. It has been $170.10. It actually went down, highly unusual. It went down for 2023, thank goodness. We're seeing it may increase in 2024, but I'll be honest, we do not have the amount yet. So it may go up and it may go down. Folks who have a higher income may pay a slightly higher monthly premium for Part B. And folks who have a lower income, and we can talk about that uh, individually, but if you're finding it hard to afford the Part B monthly premium, just know there is a program to help you with that. Part B also has an annual deductible. Um, amazingly, it also went down from 2022. So the current annual deductible, so the portion that you're kind of responsible for paying out of pocket is $226 per year. After your deductible is met, you typically pay 20% of the Medicare approved amount for services that are covered by Medicare. So again, this is, we're talking about when you have traditional or regular Medicare. So you may end up with paying the 20%. This is where Medicare supplement plans can help you. Not covered by Part A or B is still uh, long-term care. So that would be care in a facility that's not immediately following a hospital stay. That's more long-term care that may go on for years and years. Um, most dental care, eye exams, dentures, acupuncture, many things, unfortunately, are not covered by Part A or B. So briefly, sorry, I'm gonna go back one slide. Briefly, I'm gonna talk about how to help cover those 20% costs with a Medicare supplement. So again, this is for someone that has traditional Medicare A and B. They're also called Medigap or MedSup. As we can see, Medicare can get quite expensive and unfortunately it was never designed to cover all of the costs. Um, so again, for most folks with A and B, you may end up with a 20% co-payment, and that is where um, it's kind of like an employer coverage, like 80%, you end up with the 20%. A supplement can pick up that 20% in many cases. So this is why having extra coverage is important. Medigap or Medicare supplement plans are health insurance sold by private companies to supplement Medicare, of course. You use them with original Medicare A and B only. They only pay if Medicare does. Again, most doctors and hospitals in the US accept Medicare. And the idea with Medicare supplement or Medigap, of course, is to fill in the gaps not covered by Medicare. It helps pay some of the costs not covered by Medicare such as deductibles, co-payments, and co-insurance. One important thing is, again, they are only used with Medicare, with original Medicare A and B. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, these are not available. They cannot, you cannot have one at the same time. You cannot have a Medicare Advantage plan and a Medicare supplement. How Medicare supplements work is you pay an additional premium for a Medigap in addition to your Part B and your Part D premium. Again, they're different from Medicare Advantage plans and you cannot have them at the same time. There are 10 standardized plans available. So this can get a little confusing because they also have letters assigned to them, A through N. Very confusing, right? That's where SHIP counselors can help. The plans with the same letter have identical benefits from company to company, but the cost may be different. You may have brand loyalty to kind of, you know, hey, I've always liked um, Mutual of Omaha, I'm going to go with them. Um, and generally, those, but they are the same, they're identical. So a, a supplement plan A is going to be the same, whether it's offered by Mutual of America or AARP or any other company. Once someone enrolls in a Medigap or Medicare supplement, that plan is kept long-term. So these don't kind of come up for renewal every open enrollment like the other um, options that we're going to discuss to you. And 
This slide just offers more details. Again, I'll just review really quickly in interest of time, Medicare supplement or Medigap is used with original Medicare only. It's designed to cover the gaps that Medicare does not cover. They are standardized plans. And of course, the more a plan offers, the more expensive it will be. Um, some plans are starting to add in some additional benefits. Um, and all supplement plans will cover all or some of the Part B coinsurance. The best time to enroll in a Medicare supplement plan is in your initial enrollment period. So that's when you're first eligible for Medicare. It starts the first month you're 65 and enrolled in Part B. Or if you're a younger person and start getting Medicare um, after receiving Social Security disability, the, the six month period during which you're first eligible. Importantly, I'll just jump down a bit on this slide, but Plan C and Plan F are no longer offered to new enrollees, but if you were already enrolled in a Plan C or a Plan F, you can keep it. So for those of you that have a Plan C or Plan F, don't worry, those are going to continue. Um, but if you're new to Medicare, you can't get those. The only thing that made those more comprehensive is that they covered the annual Part B deductible. Um, so at this point, currently, they're, they're not um, covered. The new ones offered do not cover that. Really important, the last bullet point here, and I'll read it for those who can't see it. Medicare standard supplement plans do not have a network. So you don't have to be calling and checking and, you know, are you going to accept my supplement? If it's a supplement, as long as your provider accepts Medicare, the supplement plan will pay those additional costs that it covers. They all cover the same benefits. They have kind of a list of core benefits. I'm going over time, so I'm not going to read them in detail because I want to make sure we get to Medicare Advantage plans. Again, the best time to buy a Medicare supplement is within six months of enrolling in Medicare Part B. In some situations, you may qualify for a guaranteed issue, right? So a time during which a plan cannot turn you down. And again, once the Medicare supplement plan is selected, they're generally held long term. And the annual open enrollment period that starts October 15th does not apply to Medicare supplement plans. Enrollment in a plan is completed through the private insurance company. We have a really nice guide to Medicare supplement plans in Illinois, and you can get that by calling the SHIP number that I'm going to give you that we'll provide at the end of the presentation. There's other supplemental coverage. Sometimes people are using benefits from their former employer or union. In that case, usually Medicare pays first and the retiree plan plays second. You must still enroll in Medicare. Again, this can get very confusing. So we all, always encourage you to call SHIP and we'll be giving you that number. I'm gonna pass it back to Sonia for Medicare Advantage and sorry for the time and I'll turn off my camera for right now. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay, so jumping into Medicare Advantage. So remember the puzzles we um, last saw previously? So we are now going to talk about the right, which is Medicare Advantage. It's another way to get your Medicare benefits. So Medicare Advantage plans are sometimes called oh, sorry, Part C. If you choose a Medicare Advantage plan, Part C, you are essentially choosing a privatized version of Medicare in which you have your Medicare claims paid by a private company. And this is referred to as Medicare Advantage plan. Premiums, make a note about the $0 free plans. These are free and that there is no monthly premium, but everyone still pays for the Part B monthly premium. So $164.90 in 2023, unless you have a low monthly income, which we will cover below. Um, because basically you still have to have Parts A and B. You are just having all of your benefits offered by a private uh, insurance company. And PFFS refers to private fee for services. 
And these plans tend to be very expensive um, because you are paying out of pocket for your services. So once again, it's called uh, PFFS, Private Fee for Service. So these, are, uh, these tend to be expensive as you are paying out of pocket. Okay, so how Medicare Advantage plans work? You may have to use doctors, hospitals, and other providers that work with the plan. So this is when they, when they call it the network or in-network. And you may get extra benefits like vision, hearing, or dental services. So you select and enroll in a plan for the calendar year, and then you reevaluate the plan during the, app, the annual open enrollment period. Next slide, please. So Medicare Advantage plan costs. Monthly premiums may be lower than the Medigap plans. So there are still co-pays uh, and co-insurance for each service. The Medicare Advantage premium is paid in addition to the monthly Part B premium. Medicare Advantage plans are now required to have a maximum out-of-pocket limits for Medicare Parts A and B services. If the limit is met, the plan covers the costs of Part A and B services for the remainder of the calendar year. So what you should consider before choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. So people need to really, really be aware of the first and last points here, which I will read off. Patients need to double, triple check that their doctor accepts, accepts a plan before they make a change. Often uh, a plan's representative may say, we already know all of your doctors accept this plan, but please, please be aware that this is not always the case. So note that, note that original Medicare or traditional Medicare A and B do not have networks, meaning that most doctors in the US accept Medicare. Medicare Advantage plans, on the other hand, do have networks. So questions to ask yourself before choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. Can you see your current doctors and use the hospital of your choice and get full benefits? Um, verify claims made by a sales agent before enrolling. For example, call your doctor to be sure that he or she is in the plan's network and accepting new patients. So a Medicare's enrollment period. Because we do sometimes see patients being enrolled in the Medicare Advantage plans and then not able to see their doctors, you may have a second chance to get out of a Medicare Advantage plan. So you can change during annual open enrollment, which is October 15th through December 7th annually. You can also disenroll from an, a Medicare Advantage plan or choose a different Medicare Advantage plan every year from January 1st through March 31st. Medicare Advantage open enrollment period from January 1st through March 31st of each year. If you're enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, you can switch to a different Medicare Advantage plan or switch to original Medicare and join a separate Medicare drug plan. So once during this time, note, you can only switch plans during this period. Medicare Part D. So now we're going to switch to the Medicare Part D, uh, pres uh, prescription drug coverage offered by private drug companies for people with Medicare. <clears throat> this is your prescription drug coverage, and it's basically required for everyone. If you do not enroll in Part D, <clears throat> sometimes you will see people say, I don't need Part D. I don't take any prescription medications. Unfortunately, you pretty much do need to enroll in Part D because eventually there may be one or two medications you have to take and you can get socked with a late enrollment penalty if you do not enroll in Part D when you are first eligible. So please do it. It can be affordable and we will cover ways um, that you can make it more affordable. <clears throat> two, uh, let's see, two parts of, of Part D plans to choose from. Okay, we'll, we'll skip that there. 
Okay, what is covered under, uh, next slide, Seth, thank you. What is covered under Part D? So most people are fine with a drug plan well under $50 per month, but note that you will have co-pays at the pharmacy on top of that. The key to picking a good plan, a good plan is to use your drug list, your medication list, that your prescriptions are covered well by the plan you pick. Medicare.gov, as we've mentioned before, so Medicare.gov has a Part D plan finder that is very useful and easy to use. Next slide, please. So Medicare plan D cost, uh, the monthly premium varies by plan. The annual deductible varies. Many have a $0 deductible. Co-payment or co-insurance for each drug bill. This may fluctuate during the year because of part, the Part D donut hole. We will provide more details. Um, there is a late penalty, so it's a 1% extra Part D premium. So apply to the Part D premium after enrollment for each month you were eligible but did not enroll. Exceptions to this penalty is if you have credible drug coverage through an employer, retiree, union plan, or a VA coverage. So cost overview, um, as we can see, uh, the cost can really add up. <clears throat> but do not fear, there are, pe there are people and programs to help you. And this is what Stephanie is going to speak about next. Uh, but let me briefly just, uh, for those on the phone, part A is $0 for most. Part B, again, is $164.90 a month for most. And part D, an average premium, would be about $32 a month plus co-pays, and the supplement varies. And um, the cost of Medicare Advantage with drug coverage, Part A is zero for most, Part B, 164.90 for most. Part C would be zero to $200 a month uh, because you have the total premium, the total premium a month is 164.90 and it could be up to around $350. And you would have co-pays for medical care and drug co-pays. All right, thank you, Steph. Okay, thank you. Hopefully I'm back up. Um, I advanced too quickly on one of the slides, so I'm gonna um, reread one of the things that um, um, we didn't have time to cover, which is just, I wanna be clear on part D, there are two ways to get it. So one is if you have the traditional A and B plus supplement plus a D, and the other way is the Medicare Advantage plans. Um, most of them now are called MAPD, which just means it's a Medicare Advantage plan with drug coverage. Um, so I meant to um, give Sonia time to clarify that, and I breezed too quickly through it. Really importantly, we know this is a whole lot of information, and it can be really overwhelming to hear about all the costs that you're going to you're going to incur that you're potentially already incurring. So. That is where SHIP comes in. And our whole purpose is helping you make Medicare more affordable and more understandable. So I know we have just a few minutes and we wanna make sure we get to our questions. So I will quickly go over some ways to help make Medicare more affordable and understandable. First of all, a lot of times people don't even know what they already have. They are not sure maybe if what they have is a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare supplement um, with a separate Part D plan. So it can be very confusing to even know what kind of plan you have. A great way to check is calling 1-800-MEDICARE. And those numbers now, thank goodness, are on the screen and I'm also going to read them for those on the phone. It's 1-800-MEDICARE, which is 800-633-4233. The Social Security Administration is who handles eligibility and enrollment. So if it's a question about, can I get Part B? I'm ready to enroll in Part B. I waited and now I'm ready. Those kind of questions are the Social Security Administration because they handle eligibility and enrollment for Medicare. That number is also on your screen and I'll read it. It's 800-772-1200. 
and again, don't worry, we can give these all to you if you call us, and I'm going to read that number in just a minute, and I'll, I'll read it twice. Um, Medicare.gov, on that website, I love Medicare.gov, so that's Medicare spelled out with dot G-O-V at the end. On there is a plan finder tool. There is a whole section where you can find health and drug plans. They do not, I've checked a couple of times recently, I don't think they will have 2024 information yet. Again, open enrollment for this year and every year starts October 15th and it ends on December 7th. They chose that date, probably a lot of you know that date. Um, they chose that date because it's a very easy date for folks to remember. Um, because it's Pearl Harbor date and it's just very easy to remember Medicare open enrollment ends on December 7th every year and it hasn't started yet so don't worry it starts October 15th and it goes to December 7th. On medicare.gov you can look at the plan finder tool again you can look at whether your plan um, whether your service or piece of equipment or particular test that you need done you can see whether that is covered by Medicare and at what rate. Um, you can do a personalized search by entering the personalized information on your Medicare card, but even if you don't have that, you can find a lot of great information on medicare.gov. And the third way to check your coverage and to also get a lot of help and guidance is to call a SHIP counselor. So every state has a, a senior health insurance program. It may be called something different in your state. I know we may have some folks calling us from out of state or joining online. So just know that your state does have a senior health insurance program. In Illinois, the number is 1-800-252-8255. And I'll say it again, 800 252 8966. And that goes to the Department on Aging. There are many different programs there, and you're going to choose the option for SHIP, which I think might be two, but I'm not positive. <laughs> I also put the website there. Um, it's very easy to find. If you're joining by phone, you can just really you can search Illinois Department on Aging and the word SHIP, which is just like a ship on the ocean. So really quickly, it's just really helpful if you contact Medicare or a SHIP counselor when you're first eligible for Medicare. And it's important to make a plan for your specific situation. For example, whether you're still working and you still have employer coverage and wanna keep that, and um, we can help you figure those things out. So you wanna decide when are you taking Medicare A and B? Are you gonna go with the option of kind of the, the left option of traditional Medicare plus a supplement? Are you going to go the right side with Medicare Advantage, where you've got everything combined and through one company? And then again, if you're on the left side, you do need to add Part D. It's really important to keep documentation of what you decide to do and why, who you spoke with. Um, it's, it's especially important if you delay enrollment and need to avoid, which we all want to avoid late enrollment penalties. So it's really important to write down who you talk to at your employer, you know, HR department on which date and all of that. As this can be really hard to afford, I just want to quickly say there's a Medicare savings program. There are a few different ones, but basically if you're struggling with paying that monthly Part B premium, we know that's, that's a big expense. $165 a month is not easy. <laughs> and, um, if, if that is a struggle for you, there is a program that can pay that 164 or 165 a month, or even it might, you know, if it goes up next year and gets even, you know, more of a struggle, just know there is a program to help with that. And you can call your state SHIP to see if you qualify. In Illinois, you can also apply right online at ABE. So it's Abe, like Abe Lincoln, dot Illinois, dot gov. Extra Help is a fantastic program that's specifically designed to help with Medicare Part D costs. And you can apply online through the Social Security Administration. You can also apply in person at a local SSA office or by calling SSA. And again, that number is 800-772-1200.
Extra Help is a fantastic program. And if you forget the name, it's almost such a basic name that I feel like people forget it a lot, but it's, it's a really fantastic program. You can have a slightly higher income for the Extra Help program than for the Medicare Savings program. So it's got a little flexibility. So if you feel like, again, if you feel like you're struggling with costs, just know these programs are out there to help you. Medicaid um, is income-based and it's, it's fairly low. So if you're over this income around 1200 a month, again, this is in Illinois and this changes a lot, um, but for an individual per month, if you're making under around um, 1240 a month, you should definitely apply. Even if you're over that and you have a lot of medical expenses, you can still apply. And there are several different ways to apply. Currently online is your best bet. And in Illinois, again, that's A-B-E, like Abe Lincoln, dot Illinois, spelled out, dot G-O-V, and that's your best bet. There's a, a link on there that just says apply for benefits. You just click that little button and start the application. It does, and I'll be honest from helping folks with this, it does take several months to process, but they can backdate it once they, if they deem that you're Medicaid eligible, they will backdate it to the month of your application. And it's faster if you're able to upload all of the necessary, you know, proof of income, bank statement, and all of that when you are applying. Briefly, yes, you can have Medicare and Medicaid, and it's a really good option if you're finding it impossible to afford costs. So in that case, basically Medicare acts like your primary and Medicaid acts like a supplement and picks up the costs that Medicare does not cover. These are a couple websites that you can do a quick financial screening to see like, hey, am I eligible for Medicaid? Maybe I'm eligible for SNAP or food stamps. Maybe I'm eligible for extra help, but I can't remember what the re required income is for all of these various things. Benefitscheckup.com is a great tool. And then there's also benefits.gov, a government website that kind of conglomerates a lot of federal and state information to see what you might be eligible for. Prescription assistance, there's lots of different ways that you can get that. Um, one quick way I'll just mention patient assistance programs. So these might be sponsored by, for example, Pfizer has one. Um, if you're finding it hard to afford a particular medication, you go to the pharmacy and you find out it's, they've got it ready for you, but guess what? The copay is $900. Um, many of these, um, there are assistance programs through the drug companies and you can call SHIP for that information. You can also ask at your doctor's office. Some other ways of finding help with prescription costs are a few websites. GoodRx has these um, easy coupons you can print. I like rxassist.org because you can look up the medication name really easily. I just used it for um, someone was having a hard time affording Eliquis. So I couldn't remember, you know, which company, which application, everything is right there. You just type in the medication name and it'll bring up the application and all the information about that program and how you can qualify. Needy Meds does the same thing. It's got a really nice list of coupons and prescription assistance programs. A lot of pe people like Blink Health or Capsule Pharmacy. I don't personally know them. I just um, am throwing those out there as options that people, certainly people, um, some folks have great results with and save money. We're almost done and I'll take, we'll take your questions. Reputable sources of information, it's really important. I know all of you, especially this time of year, right? It's almost open enrollment. Again, that starts October 15th. So a lot of you are probably getting these things in the mail, they're getting calls. I just got one. I was so angry at the person. They said, I'm calling from the Medicare health plan. They were not with Medicare and I know that because they are not calling people. <laughs> so please be aware of calls that come to your phone and please don't ever give out your social security number, Medicare, any personal information to salespeople. Um, I think most of you are really careful about this and that you know you, you can tell the difference, but it's just so unfortunate that every year we see a lot of folks that are taken advantage of. So 
Reputable sources include Medicare.gov. That should be your go-to for these questions. The book that I'm holding up, Medicare and You. Okay, it's, it, all of your questions really are answered in here. Um, Medicareinteractive.org, I like that one a lot. KFF, uh, KFF.org, um, K with a double F like Frank.org has a lot of Medicare fact sheets and I really like that one as well. And I'm gonna really quickly talk about some important changes. I'm literally gonna do this in two minutes. So really quickly, um, Part B coverage begins earlier for those new to Medicare. This is a new change they made this year. It used to be if you enrolled late in Part B, it wouldn't start until July 1st. Now it starts the first of the month after you enroll in Part B. Um, so again, don't delay. If you, if you need to enroll in Part B, just go ahead and do it. It's gonna start the next month. Um, really important during the pandemic, um, they were not ending the Medicaid uh, benefits uh, when we were during a public health emergency, and now that period has ended. If you lost your Medicaid benefits or they are about to end, you do receive a special enrollment period during which you can get a guaranteed um, issue. So you have a right to one of those Medicare supplement plans during which the companies cannot turn you down. Um, that's a period of 63 days from the time you lose your Medicaid benefits. And then finally, we're gonna see a lot of cost sharing, um, lowering, we hope, of your costs for Part D, partly based on um, they're going to start doing more price negotiating. You've probably seen things about that. Um, you're gonna see a cap on insulin costs under Part D, which is excellent. And they're really expanding a lot of the um, coverage. A lot of this is due to people voting for representatives who have um, their interests in mind. So again, decisions about Medicare are handled by Congress. So it's really important that you vote and um, continue making your voices heard. And I'll pass it back to Sonia for our wrap up. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, again, this is a lot of information, and I know some over the some people over the phone could not see the slides. But when in doubt, please call SHIP, Senior Health Insurance Program. Remember, even though it says senior in the name, SHIP is not only for seniors; it's for any age. The only requirement is that your questions have to do with Medicare. As a reminder, we are not selling anything. We work with consumers to help them achieve what is most important to them. We will not tell you which plan to enroll in um, or not to enroll in, but we will provide general information. For most enrollees, the most important thing is going to be cost. Um, call 800-252-8966. And remember to call early in open enrollment, which starts October 15. And again, at Rush, we can take appointments for open enrollment starting October 1st. So please call. Um, so so please do not call until October 1st. And um, we thank you so much for your time, and we hope you gained a lot of great imp information. Thank you so much, and have a great day. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh my, what a soup of letters. Uh, not only A, B, C, and D, but also you gave us some others like K, L, M, L, you name it. So um, it can be confusing. So thank you not only for giving this lecture to our members, but also for doing the work of counseling through the uh, Medicare Senior Health Insurance Program. Um, I have quite a few questions, comments from YouTube. The chat has been quite active. Um, so yes, let's start the conversation. Um, let's see. Let me start by making sure that our callers have an opportunity to unmute. 
and then ask a question before we move into the questions that we have from the YouTube channel um, and mine. <laughs> oh my goodness, it can be so confusing. Anybody from the callers, please. You can press star six and then that will unmute your phone and you will be able to ask a question for Stephanie and Sonia. Let's give it a few seconds. Sometimes it can be a little bit, um, take a, a, few, a few seconds to get to those digits. Okay, well, then let's get to some of the questions that we received. One of the first questions that I actually would like to make sure that I mentioned because we, for the most part, the individuals that join our lectures are from the region, from Illinois specifically. Uh, but for the most part, everything is applicable throughout the nation, right? They should find out who is providing, for example, the Medicare savings programs in their states and things like that. Absolutely. Thanks for asking that. Yes. And um, yes, as I mentioned, every state has a SHIP or senior health insurance program, and it might be called something different in your state. So if you are watching this after the fact, or if you are out of state, um, it's it's got some kind of neat names, which I always enjoy. Like in Florida, it's called Shine. Um, in Ohio, <laughs> it's called O-SHIP, which I love. Um, I don't know, it's called slightly different things, but your state does have one. And yes, it is free to everyone. And the benefit of a SHIP counselor, again, is we're not selling anything. Um, yeah. And yes, so most of these things can be, um, it's everything we talked about is applicable for, for all states, yes. Wonderful. Okay, so let me go back to the top. Thank you, Hannah, for posting the questions in the chat. Um, so what are costs or coverage for hospital days and for when you visit an ER and you are admitted to hospital overnight for observation? So I imagine that that's covered, not necessarily you will know the cost or what's the coverage. Absolutely. You can see me reaching for my book because this is when it gets into the specific costs. I'm not as good as remembering um, even, you know, years of doing this, it get, they change those coverage rates a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that is a really good question about when you're in the hospital, if you were to come to Rush today, where, where I am, and if you were to come here and you, you bring your family member and you're sitting there for hours waiting to be seen in the emergency department. Finally, you get seen at midnight and they take you upstairs to a room. You may still be under observation. And it's really important that patients and caregivers ask that question. Have I been admitted or am I here under observation? Hmm. And hospitals are required to let you know that information. Um, and it's there's different rules about coverage and rates, whether you're actually admitted to the hospital or whether you're just under observation. And that gets into kind of the nitty gritty about benefit period and whether it's covered under part A um, or whether you might incur some costs. The good news is that, you know, this is all designed to help to what I should say is to um, incentivize, to encourage hospitals to not have people you know, admitted for something and not everything gets resolved and they turn around and they have to be readmitted. So we're supposed to, as hospitals, not let that happen. And so it's to encourage people to, um, you know, encourage hospitals to cover, to lo really look at all systems, all potential problems before we send people home. Thank you for that. Um, also, what is, you, you mentioned, uh, home health services was considered a home health service. I imagine that is a little bit of confusion with home health and homemaker, but yeah, what is considered home health service? I'll take that one. So home health service are services in the home, medical services in the home, such mm -hmm. as nursing care, 
occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy even, and um, homemaker services is more so for um, assisting with the activities of daily living for a, per, for a patient, like preparing meals, companionship, uh, I think even like gro grocery run. So it's different from the home health and homemaker services, but yes, it can get definitely confusing. Great, thank you so much. Um, another question that we got in the YouTube channel, what are the out-of-pocket costs for a Vantage plan? What are the out-of-pocket costs for a Vantage plan? Okay, I think I understand. Yes, yeah, so the um, for Medicare Advantage plans, the out-of-pocket costs can really differ based on the plan. Um, what I don't remember if we mentioned it um, was that, you know, a lot of folks really like those because they sometimes will offer these additional benefits like silver sneakers where they're helping with a gym membership or they um, are starting to add vision and dental, that sort of thing. Um, so the out-of-pocket costs really vary greatly with Medicare Advantage plans. That's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, it can, it can, it can just vary greatly and you really need to ask those questions of the plan um, of that particular company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm so glad you mentioned that uh, there's also these quote unquote perks that people hear about. Um, somebody was telling me about two months ago, something about um, lowing your or mowing your lawn. And they're like, I don't know why they're asking me the, or, or they're, that will be one of the perks because I live in an apartment. So is that a scam or is that a, the, the, there's these perks about walking your dogs or I don't oh, know. Wow. Uh, I, I have not heard those, but I wouldn't be surprised. Have you, Sonia? No, I, yeah, <laughs> I would be really surprised, but you never know when they do, they add to those benefits and they change them each year. Um, or they, they may change them each year, I should say. So mm. I'm looking right now at Medicare and you, um, and I, I, I don't immediately see it, but, um, yeah, that's a really good question. I, I, I would be extra cautious of things that seem too good to be true. And I, I think I'm really glad you asked that because yes, basically if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Two of the programs I've also heard um, for the Medicare Advantage plan are, like Stephanie mentioned, the silver sneakers, like the gym membership. And yeah. the other one is a food card. So it's like a, almost like a, uh, like a, yeah, you go to the grocery, the food card, you go to the grocery and they give you a certain amount of money that you can spend on groceries. So that's another one that I've, I've heard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, I've heard about that. It's about $60.75 a month is deposited. You can use it to buy things in the grocery store. But then at times what I feel that happens is that then the in the in, in on the medical side, then there's not much coverage. So you get the perks or you get the medical coverage. So something to keep in mind as well. Um and, and Stephanie, you're referring to the Medicare and you booklet. Um, I saw that year says 2023 is the one, the new one's going to say 2024, or this is the newest? That is a good question. Yes. They, in the fall, typically, or even early next year, they'll come out with one for 2024. This is the latest one that I have. Um, Got and it. yes, good question. Because yeah, what we want to be seeing soon is the amounts that we're going to be paying in 2024. But I will say even I've often held on, to, I mean, I will hang on to this book until I get the new one. Sure. And the whole thing is available online. But again, I like looking at it on paper and it, all of the things that we're talking about are in here. And I found the list of all of the state ships. It's in here. It's in the back of this book. It's oh, every state, state health insurance programs. There it is. And it's got their phone numbers. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. So, I really like that book. So even if you have last year's, even if you have one from a couple of years ago, chances are a lot of, I mean, I know because I've still got my older ones too. A lot of the information does not change year to year and you can find a lot of your answers here. Awesome. Because he has the territories as well. 
<laughs> hey, good question. Thanks for asking that. Now let's see. Um, Puerto well, Rico is here. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very glad. It's called <laughs> Ship as well in Puerto Rico and Guam as well. It's called Guam Map. Yeah, looks like they do. Awesome. Um, yes. So get your hands on a copy of the Medicaid and You booklet. So let's see, we have many comments, compliments as well about the information, how clear you're making, offering this information, making it possible or making it available. So thank you for that. Um, there's a question about the, would you mind explaining the donut hole? There's a care, caregiver for her mom or for their mom and the mom experienced the donut hole ex, uh, recently. Absolutely. Sonia, if you want to jump in, please feel free. I'm going to try because it's a question that oh, always. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm bringing up um, in my in my very slow way an answer to this question. So yes, folks may run into a situation where um, the plan. I'm getting, I'm trying to find an example of it in this book because that's my best way of answering it. One second. And the good news is they are slowly getting rid of that. Oh. Of that gap? That yes, they hole. are slowly getting rid of that coverage gap. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, I meant to have it right in front of me. Um, so for the caregiver who has this question, if we're not able to answer it um, right now, um, I definitely want to encourage you to call SHIP. Um, and I know where I had it. Okay. Take your time. Okay, thank you. In the meantime, I'm going to read some of the comments that people have posted, um, which are great. The There's a person that spoke about having the Aetna Advantage PPO, not having a fee, um, copay, having copay for specialists, and sometimes for what insurance doesn't cover, um, and that she has been able to find a hospital, actually Rush accepting that plan, that, that goes to the comment that you made early about understanding is your hospital going to be covered? Is, are your, is your physician also going to be covered? Or, um, because that will add another element of complication if all of a sudden you change and then it's, ah, never mind, that's not covered here. So, or that we are, do not accept that plan. Um, another person was uh, also offering a suggestion about some, uh, communities in which medical devices are donated. So if you no longer need a walker or a wheelchair and all of that, if cost is a, a, a concern, um, then never hurts to check those communities, those organizations as well. Uh, good, good recommendation. Um, And that, that some pharmacies also have some of their own medicine payment plans, such as $10, $10 per script. Um, that's, a, that's a good question and good comment. Um, the, we've seen in recent years, some of the Part D plans that work, they, they make it very easily to, sorry, they make it very easy for folks to get their prescriptions, say at Walmart, at Walgreens or CVS. So the mm -hmm. plan is actually affiliated with that pharmacy and make it a little easier. And, um, you know, I'm always a little skeptical. I'm like, well, is that benefiting the patients or is that benefiting those large companies? I don't know. But I have seen people been able to, you know, be able to save a lot of money by you know, switching and getting all of their prescriptions at the pharmacy that coordinates with their plan. So um, yes, it, it can be a benefit. Wonderful. Um, I found a little bit of information about the um, coverage gap that I can read to you all that I think it, it's very, obviously, like I said, we've, and Sonia and I have been doing this work and it's really, really hard to keep, like 
you know, I have to look it up because I'm like, they, I know they've been making changes to it. Right. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's still so confusing. So yes, the, the donut hole officially closed in 2020. It was phased out. However, what happens now, it's basically the same thing. There's a coverage gap. So after you and your Part D prescription drug plan have spent a certain amount for your medications, you still have to pay up to 25% of the cost of covered drugs. So that's the sort of coverage gap. And I've got to bring up the amount. In 2023, you might hit that if you and your insurance company have paid a combined 4660 So 4660 in total for your medications during a year. So that's what you're paying and what your um, Part D, your insurance plan, have paid. That includes any deductible. And once you get into that, you're responsible for 20 up to, sorry, up to 25% of the cost of covered drugs while you're in that little gap, then you kind of get out of it. <laughs> Once you, you've you spent 7,400 out of your own pocket. Um, it's, it's not great. It's really not. And this is where I tell people like, please call us and we can help because when you're in that gap, it's like, you know, yes, then after that, it's going to be covered. Great. But you have to get, you have to pay $7,400 out of pocket mm -hmm. to get to that. Like, wow. it's insane. Um, wow. So thank you for asking that question. I posted an article that, um, that I use. I don't know if, if Hannah or if either of you is able to share that, um, but we can also, you know, potentially send it out to folks. AARP.org answers a lot of questions on the donut hole um, and also KFF.org. These health fact sheets yes. that are Medicare fact sheets, and so does Medicare.gov. Yes, we can post some of those resources in the um, uh, with with the lecture with the recording of the lecture. Perfect. So one more one more question uh, that we have here is: Why does a Medicare offer dental and vision care? Gosh, such a good question. Mm -hmm. Let's vote in some senators and representatives who will make that happen, please. We, it just, why, why isn't, I mean, yes, aren't these things part of health? Yes. Literally paid $5,000 for hearing aids. And I know many people who have done that. So we're, we're stuck. Yeah, it's out of pocket. It's not covered. Um, I don't know what the answer is for that. And thank you for asking that really important question. Vision and hearing are vital to our health. And um, I hope that changes. Thank you. One last, uh, I keep saying last, but um, when you were giving uh, Sonia the 313 rule, um, it was around the time that people turn 65, but there's some 67 also running around. So people, six, it's either 65 or 67. Uh, it, that depends on when people are born or, or is that I've heard twice, uh, both, sorry, not twice, both 65 or when you turn 67. Why some people are eligible at 65 and others at 67? Okay, I do have here, it's 65. So it says three months before the month you turn 65, the month you turn 65, and three months after you turn 65. 67 is, is it Stephanie when they if that's when they are retiring or they choose to retire at that age correct I, me yeah that's a really good question because everything uh, that I have seen about Medicare is uh 65 but I think it is related to if someone is still working and I think we're seeing a lot of places increase that age so full retirement age for many many companies nationwide may be considered 67 now mm -hmm. and that's when it's really important to make sure that you don't get hit with a late enrollment penalty for part b so mm -hmm. if you can get a letter from your employer that says this person was still working they have coverage that's at least as good as what Medicare offers. That's your letter of creditable coverage. Excellent. Thank you so much. And the link to the article about Donna Hall is already in the chat in the YouTube channel. So um, thank you so much. I hope that you also take advantage not only of this information here in the recording, but also um, during the open enrollment period 
take advantage of those senior health insurance programs counseling sessions that are offered for free, um, either at Rush or whenever is more convenient to you. Uh, there's uh, several organizations offering. Again, Sonia, Steph, uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for, for your time, for the information, and for the valuable service that you're offering to all the adults in our area. Okay, well, thank you so much. Let's go very quickly. Thank you so much for joining us, all of you. I will run very quickly now through the programs that we have coming up. Thank you so much, um, uh, Hannah, excuse me. <laughs> that was a lot of information, but thank you, Hannah, for uh, driving the slides. So Tai Chi for arthritis and fall prevention is one of the workshops that we offer here at Rush Generations. And it helps, this workshop helps participants improve balance while fostering mindfulness. Other benefits of this program include relief of pain and stiffness, reduced stress, and improvement of quality of life. These sessions are often in 16 one-hour sessions. The program has demonstrated a 40%, 47% reduction in falls, and each class is designed with a focus on proper alignment of each warm-up exercise and Tai Chi form, and can be adapted for seated positions as well. So if that's a concern to you, make sure to understand that we also you can also do these this, uh, movements sitting down. The next workshop will be held via Zoom on Wednesdays and Fridays starting September 27th through November 22nd from 11 a.m. to noon. And is, they are done by Janine Queen, who, who people at the ward. <laughs> um, then uh, Matter of Balance, I think is the, pro yes, the next program. is This is an eight session workshop for individuals who have begun restricting their physical or social activities because of a fear of falling. Sometimes that happens when people fall once or several times, then they, they, they are afraid to, to do more activities. The workshops or this workshop utilizes problem solving, confidence building and balance, improving exercise and cognitive restructuring to help Participants prevent falls, improve their balance, and regain the ability to do what is most important to them. Our next workshop will be held in person, Wednesdays and Fridays, starting October 4th through October 27th, uh, from 1 to 3, on our campus, Westside Campus at Rush University Medical Center. Um, the Friends of and family of people with memory loss support group happens the second Monday of each month in the evenings, 6 to 7.30 p.m. If you're helping someone with Alzheimer's disease, dementia, or, or any other type of dementia or memory loss, join us at our monthly meeting to share information, resources, ideas, and the ups and downs of caregiving. We are an informal, diverse group and welcome new members every month. So to register, as always, you can call our toll-free number 1-800-757-0202. The next session is next Monday, September 11th. The Diabetes Education and Support Group meets the third Tuesday of each month at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, call 1-800-757-0202 to register for the Zoom information if you are living with diabetes. You're more than welcome to join this monthly meeting to share information, resources, and ideas related to the ups and downs of managing this chronic condition. We are an informal, diverse group and welcome new members every month. Um, research shows that managing diabetes can sometimes be overwhelming. So sharing your experiences with others in similar situations is a way to relieve stress and learn new ways to care for yourself. And the next one will be happening on September 21st. 
Then the Health Legacy Program for Women is a 12 session, six week program for women of color. And this program is designed to help women learn to eat right, lose weight, and learn how to better manage their health. Workshop sessions include exercise, nutrition, counseling, and health education in a supportive environment. And again, for more information or to register, 1-800-757-0202. Our Senior Connections Friendly Color Program connects socially isolated or lonely older adults with a trained volunteer for weekly calls. And the calls are designed to be part participant-centered discussions, meaning that volunteers are calling to establish a friendship and to make a genuine connection. There's no structure, screenings, questions, or any intervention offer. So please call 1-800-757-0212 0202, excuse me, to get connected. The Rush Older Adult, Older Adult Home Modification Program is designed for older adults to work with community and health professionals so that they can learn how to gain additional support with the goals of, of continuing to live at home safely. Services are free to consumers who are eligible for these programs and the costs are covered by a generous grant from the U.S. Housing and Urban Development. Call 312-942-6400 to learn more about this program. And, or if you call our toll-free number, we'll also make sure to connect you with our colleagues in that program. Rush Caring for Caregivers. If you care for an older adult, the Rush Caregiver Intervention can help. You'll work with professionals like Stephanie and Sonia um, to figure out the help you need to care for someone 60 or older, get personalized education and support, build an effective team, and create plans that work for everyone involved. You can call our toll-free number or their direct number, which is 312-563-0350. And lastly, Shaman Senior Voices. We aim to empower older adults to discuss what matters most to them as they age. It is important to share what matters most to you, and not only in a video, but also with your physician, with your loved ones. So Shaman Senior Voices helps you do that. So please consider sharing your wisdom on why it is important for your health care team and loved ones to know your goals and wishes and what matters most to you at aging.brush.edu. You can also scan that QR code to record on a mobile device or smartphone. We are here for you as always. So make sure to always uh, reach out to you for any of these resources. Our next lecture is False Prevention Awareness, and that uh, will be in two weeks. And we hope that you will join us. Remember, Rush Generations, a healthier today and a vital tomorrow. We are always delighted to welcome suggestions from you, questions, and to see you in the audience.